Welcome to Electro Online, and in this video we're going to take a look at what we call laminar flow but in this case it's going to be laminar flow between two plates. The way that works is we have fluid here between the plates. Now the bottom plate could be stationary, it could simply be the bottom. And the top is a moving plate. We're going to be pulling on that plate. It's sitting on top of the fluid and as it's being pulled to the right at a constant velocity and that will require a certain amount of force. The amount of force required will depend upon the dimensions of the of the particular situation and also about the coefficient of viscosity of the fluid. And as the top plate is being pulled to the right, what happens is that the velocity of the fluid throughout the fluid from bottom to top will be differential. In other words, what that means is that the fluid near the very top here that's, that is just alongside the top plate will be moving pretty well as fast as the plate and the fluid at the very bottom will basically moving at velocity equal to zero and we can assume for the time being that the velocity will change linearly from the top plate down to the bottom plate. So as we're pulling the top plate to the right you can see that the fluid will begin to be deformed, it will move to the right like this and you can see that the fluid that was at point C here will now be at C prime and the fluid that was at D will now be at D prime so we can see that that will be uh, equal to a velocity but in other words the distance traveled divided by the time taken will equal the velocity of the fluid just below that plate. Now there's a lot of analogy between this and the shear stress and the shear strain or with other words the shear modulus. So on the right here I've drawn, I've drawn something on the board that we should be familiar with at this point from mechanics and here we have a block. Uh, hopefully what we do is we somehow nail down the block so that it can move so we'll put some nails in there like that so that the bottom cannot move and then we'll push against the top and if we push hard enough that block will deform. In other words the top portion of the block will move to the right the distance delta x. The height of the block would be L and therefore we can say that the shear strain would be the deformation here delta x divided by the height of the block L. The shear stress applied to the block will be equal to the force divided by the surface area of the block and then the shear modulus is defined as the stress divided by the strain so it's going to be force divided by area and divided by the deformation delta x divided by L the height of the block and that's where the analogy comes in because if we take a look at it notice that we can see here since S is going to be constant for a particular material of the block we can then say that F divided by A will be proportional to delta x divided by L and the constant of proportionality is indeed the shear modulus in this case the analogy here is exactly the same. Again we push against the, the top plate like that with a force F and we can then see that the surface area of that, of that plate at the top is equal to A. And so therefore we can have something analogous to the what we call the, the stress. We can say that the stress in this case is simply going to be the ratio of the force divided by the area. Not the deformation, in other words the strain. So the strain in this case can also be expressed in terms of how far the, the water moves and so that would be from C to C prime so we could say that would be hmm, let's call it uh, delta x in this case so delta x in this case is C prime minus C or D prime minus D and so the strain would be, then be the delta x divided by the um, oh, not the area in this case delta x would be divided by the L the height or the depth of the water right here or the fluid I shouldn't say water I should just say fluid any general fluid. Alright so what we can say here is that we should have an analogy here we have F divided by A should be proportional to delta X divided by L but it doesn't quite work out that way there's one slight difference is that as we pull and we continue to pull the deformation continues on indefinitely it doesn't stop in the case of a solid block here the deformation will eventually stop but over here it will not stop so we can't quite use the exact same analogy. So what should we do instead? Well we know that if we pull at the right with the right force that the velocity of that will be constant. And so instead of talking about the deformation divided by the L, we can talk about the rate of the deformation, how fast it's changing, how fast it's moving to the right divided by L. So in other words what we can say here instead is that the F divided by A will be proportional to the change or the rate of change, let me write it like that, of delta x divided by L. Now L of course is a constant so that would mean it's the rate of change of the change in x, the change in distance and the rate of change in distance 
that would be velocity. So therefore we can say that f divided by a would be proportional to dx dt, that would be the rate of change of x over time divided by l, and of course dx dt is equal to the velocity, that means we can write that f divided by a is proportional to the velocity divided by l. <clears throat> And so that's where the analogy comes in between fluid flow between plates and what we see here has the shear stress and shear strain being, being proportional to the shear modulus. All right, so now we want to turn it into an equation. Notice if we want to turn this into an equation, the, to turn it into an equal sign, we have to then say, okay, we can say here that S is equal to the, the ratio of F over A divided by delta X over L. And so we can do the same kind of thing here. Now, instead of having the shear modulus here, what do we have here instead? Well, that would be the viscosity. Now, we have two symbols we can use for viscosity. We can use the symbol here, or we can use the symbol here. I've been using the symbol right there, but either one would be fine, so let me go ahead and use that symbol again. And so what we can now do is write this into a form of an equation by writing that F divided by A is equal to the viscosity times V over L. And so what we can then do is move the A over here and write in terms of the force. We can then say that the force is equal to the viscosity of the, of the fluid times the area of the plate times the ratio of V over L. And this would then become the equation. The analysis equation over here would be this one right here for the shear modulus, but in the case of moving one plate over a fluid that has a bottom plate over here, the amount of force required to move the plate at a uniform velocity would be equal to the viscosity of the material or the fluid, the area of the plate, the velocity at which the plate will move when you apply a constant force, and the depth or the height of the fluid being pulled to the right. And so this here is the equation we need to express the laminar flow between plates and the, and the relationship between the force, the viscosity, and the rate of the velocity moving, of, the rate of the velocity of the plate moving to the right. And that's how we do laminar flow between plates.